Crazy 24-7, I'm Aaron Dean. There is growing speculation about the health of 89-year-old Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein of California. A new report indicates that she's become increasingly dependent on aides to help her do her job on Capitol Hill. This comes as some California Democrats are asking Governor Gavin Newsom to keep his promise if he's called on to appoint a replacement for Feinstein if she retires. Good morning, Los Angeles. California Governor Gavin Newsom hit his party's top issues at the California Democratic Convention. This is the free state of California. But not the biggest question swirling among the Democratic faithful, especially in this room of black Democrats. Are you confident that Governor Newsom will keep his promise? I'm optimistic. That's not confident. I'm cautiously optimistic. She's talking about this. Uh, if, in fact, Dianne Feinstein uh, were to retire, uh, will you nominate an African-American woman? We have multiple names in mind, and the answer is yes. Age 89, Senator Dianne Feinstein had been Senator absent from the Senate for months battling health issues. Now, back on the job, she maintains she can fulfill her duties and will not resign. But... Should she step aside, Governor Newsom would nominate the person to complete her term. With the razor-thin Democratic Senate majority and judicial nominations in the balance, California Democrats are confident Newsom is aware of the stakes. I don't think he needs reminding. He knows why this is so important. Kimberly Ellis is one of a powerful group of black Democrats openly lobbying for Newsom to keep his word. Black women are the margin of victory. We get it done. We believe that Gavin Newsom will keep his promise to fill that seat with a black woman. The only question is which black woman. And from our perspective, it's Barbara or Bust. Congresswoman Barbara Lee, who has been in Congress since the late 90s. She is already running for Feinstein's Senate seat in the 2024 election. Should you be that black woman? Well, let me say, I'm focused on this campaign and I'm not gonna get involved in his process. He made a commitment and I am running to win this campaign. How important is it for a black woman to sit in the Senate? Representation matters. When you look at the fact that there's not a voice in the Senate who represents our diversity, it's outrageous. Y'all want this picture? But choosing Lee isn't a simple choice for Newsom. It would mean elevating her above two rivals in the Senate race. And we're gonna be friends during the campaign. That's right. That's Congressman Adam Schiff. He's also running for the same Senate seat. The lead prosecutor in Donald Trump's first impeachment trial backed by former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. My father gave me some very good advice, which is focus on the things you can't control, not the things you can't. Uh, so I'm focused on running my race. And uh, I do think that, that uh, ultimately voters want to decide this race. Um, and they want that choice to make. And, and I think they will have that choice. Congresswoman Katie Porter, beloved by the progressive base, is also running for the Senate seat. How much does that tip the scales if he selects representatively? I assume that Governor Newsom will keep his promise, um, but I can't speak for him or what he's thinking about. For me, this campaign is about not about the past, it's about the future. It's not just about the next six months, it's about the next six years, the next 60 years for California. A Newsom advisor tells CNN this is a politically fraught choice Democrats he would like to avoid. His supporters say it would present a tough decision that could test Newsom's own standing within the party. I know the governor has his mind on the future himself, and people have long memories um, as to whether or not they can trust someone to support, shall we say, promises that they made. We're proud to be here as Democrats. Nine people were shot, including a one-year-old child, during an altercation over Memorial Day weekend. It was between two groups near a busy area of the beach in Hollywood, Florida. Police have detained at least one person of interest, but are still searching for an additional suspect who was described as wearing a black short sleeve shirt and camel shorts. The Memorial Day weekend shooting was part of at least 262 mass shootings in the U.S. so far this year. That's according to the Gun Violence Archive. The victims are said to be in stable condition and range in age from 1 to 65. The Texas Crown Act has been signed into law by Governor Greg Abbott. 
The Crown Act, which stands for Creating a Respectful and Open World for Natural Hair, prohibits discrimination on the basis of hair texture or protective hairstyle associated with race. Representative Retta Bowers, the author of the bill, said that it will improve the lives of countless Texans. Also known as House Bill 567, the Crown Act was successfully voted on in the Texas Senate with a vote of 29 to 1 and in the Texas House with a vote of 143 to 5. The bill will now go into effect September 1st. While most Americans and even members of Congress were enjoying the long weekend, the White House and House Republican leadership clinched a tentative deal on raising the debt ceiling during the weekend. The agreement suspends the nation's borrowing limit for two years, which will allow the debt to grow beyond the ceiling. The Advocate Channel takes a deeper look. First came the deal, now comes the sale. We always expected that there would be certain pockets of opposition to this deal, but overall it's a good deal, it's a fair deal, and we're confident that it will get to the president's desk. And it may not be easy for President Biden to convince some Democrats. Many of us right now are feeling, are very angry that we have been held hostage, that we find ourselves in this situation. And House Speaker Kevin McCarthy to persuade some Republicans. Not one Republican should vote for this deal. It is a bad deal. Biden and McCarthy reached a tentative deal Saturday to suspend the nation's debt ceiling and cap non-defense spending for two years. Hardline conservatives say it doesn't cut spending enough and want it stopped. It's time to go back to the drawing table. It's time for us to say no. Some lawmakers say their dissatisfaction with some parts of the bill is outweighed by the potential consequences. When we look at the prospect of a first ever default in American history that would truly be a catastrophic event. House Republican leaders want to put the plan to a floor vote Wednesday. The deal in its legislative form needs to pass both chambers of Congress and reach President Biden's desk by next Monday, June 5th, the day the Treasury Department now says the government will run out of money to pay all its bills. The CDC reports cases of what's known as HMPV rose 36% higher than average this spring. Medical professionals say that HMPV is tricky to diagnose. It has the same symptoms as influenza and COVID-19. Researchers say that it's impacting young children and seniors. There's no vaccine or antiviral drugs to treat it. Instead, doctors are caring for seriously ill people by tending to their symptoms. It's estimated that a quarter of all adults in the U.S. have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and many don't know that they have it. The Avocate Channel has more on who's at risk and why early detection is critical. It can affect anyone of any age, including children. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is common but silent. Many don't know they have it. The more severe form of the disease can cause major health problems. These patients are at increased risk of developing cancer. They're also increased risk of progressing to cirrhosis and even require a liver transplant to be able to treat this. Dr. Blanca Liziola Mayo with Mayo Clinic says this disease is more common in those who are obese and people who have metabolic syndrome are at increased risk. That means the patient has three or more medical problems linked to obesity like high blood pressure, high blood sugar levels, or high triglycerides. I think the most important thing to remember about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or NAFLD is that it's reversible. Which is why early detection is key. Mayo says those with two or more risk factors should be screened. The condition tends to run in families and Hispanic Americans are disproportionately affected. She says the disease is also showing up in a growing number of children. Treatment includes being healthier. I see it as a tip team approach where all the family needs to really work on this in lifestyle modifications and making making sure that we follow a healthy diet and remain as active as possible. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Thank you for joining us for AZ 24-7. For more, go to theadvocatechannel.com and subscribe on the Advocate Channel YouTube page. For AZ 24-7, I'm Aaron Dean.